Hi, and welcome to how to work with investors as a real estate agent. In this video, you're going to learn how to become an investor friendly real estate agent. And we're going to talk about working with those investors and the wholesalers and just a couple of concepts of those relationships. We're also going to talk about where to find these investors and these wholesalers. This video is recorded exclusively for realestatefees.com. I'm Erin Hibbert, and I've been a real estate agent in the Baton Rouge market since 2017. I've actually built my real estate business on working with a variety of clients, including investors, flippers, wholesalers, and have learned a ton along the way. Um, so let's dive into the information. I guess the big question is, do real estate agents work with investors? And really, in short, yes. You know, a lot of agents um, have built their businesses as well, working with these types of um, investors and, and flippers. You know, and some are actually worried that these flippers might come in, you know, flip these houses real quick, pump up the comps for the neighborhood, maybe making some of the buyers no longer able to purchase in that neighborhood. Um, you know, so that's a concern. And then there's also some of these investors might be our rivals. You know, if they're getting to these sellers before we do, then that's taking our business. Um, or the fact that they're just rivals because we're both flipping properties. Sometimes it it does get a weird vibe though, I'll be honest. Um, and, you know, some agents, they absolutely thrive on working with these investors. It's It's part of what they're doing already. And so to really just jive with these investors and their goals, you know, can really build a great long-term relationship. It's just really, you know, a different experience, different um, clientele when you you focus on investors. So the big question is, how do you work with these investors as a real estate agent? And, you know, there's a few things that you're going to have to be able to do. It's sometimes very different than working with a regular buyer or end user. Um, the investors, you know, it's it's very much a business for them. They're less emotional. And really the biggest thing is you've got to know their goals. You have got to have really good conversations. You've got to know if they're going to be flipping, if they're going to be purchasing properties for rental purposes, if they're looking for long-term appreciation. Um, real clarity and good conversation on their goals will make your job as a real estate agent in representing them a lot easier. easier. Um, second, you got to speak their language. There's just a ton of acronyms and possibly new vocabulary that you're less familiar with, you know, cap rates, ROI, ARV. You got to get comfortable having the conversations and being able to understand the conversation that the investor is having or the questions they're asking, of course. Um, next, you got to be quick on the draw. These investors, they move fast. They don't wait around. They want their comparables quickly. If they want to go see a property or get you in there to do a video walkthrough, you've got to find a way to make it happen. So if your time schedule is a little more limited, you've got to build partnerships to make that happen because these deals don't wait for your schedule. Another thing is the being able to go beyond the MLS. You know, some of the best deals are not on the market. They never come to market. The public doesn't know about them. And investors love that because of course, you know, less competition typically means less um, or a better price, you know, less they have to pay. Uh, and sometimes it's with these, these wholesalers we're going to discuss shortly that are going to have those deals. So building that network is going to be key for you. And of course, you got to keep your ethics in check. You know, some investors... They live and work in their business and they're held to different standards or, you know, boundaries than we do as agents. You know, we've got our own rules to to abide by. So you've got to make sure you're on top of your game with that and be willing to set some boundaries that maybe go into a gray area of the real estate world. Um, you know, because it's your business after all that you've got to protect. And then with investors. It's rarely just a one and done. 
kind of situation. These are long-term relationships. And if you do a good job, you could get their business for years to come, you know, get a really good repeat customers, possibly get referrals from those investors. Um, you know, because at this point, agents are a, di a dime a dozen. And so you've got to make sure you stand out when you're working with these investors. So switching gears, how do you work with the wholesalers as a real estate agent? So, and really do, do agents work with wholesalers? And the short answer is maybe. First of all, um, it's not legal in every state. There's different rules and regulations. And second, it's not every agent's cup of tea, so to speak, to work with these wholesalers. Uh, there's a lot of skepticism um, with the agents in the, in the wholesaler world and just their industry and their business model, you know, because these wholesalers are, in short, taking the business from the agents. Um, they're going directly to the sellers, getting the property under contract, and so cutting out the need for a listing agent altogether. And so what they're just doing, the wholesalers, they're just flipping that property over to investors. Um, and sometimes that can rub agents the wrong way. They don't, you know, possibly believe in the model that they're doing. They, um, it's just less traditional, you know, for them and, and the way they run their business, especially if they don't have those investors to to buy those properties, you know, they are fishing out of the same pool, so to speak. Um, but really as an agent, you've, you've got to have an open mind. Real estate is so, such a huge industry. It's so diverse, so complex. And there's just so many different ways to buy and sell properties that keeping that open mind, you know, being able to collaborate with these wholesalers, build relationships, um, you know, they can be a huge, really you know, huge source of, of deals, off market ones. They may be doing some of the work that we may not be doing, you know, knocking on doors, going into areas where the houses are run down and just, you know, areas that you, you don't visit very often. And so they could be a huge, huge source of opportunity. Um, and of course, you've got to assess, you know, what that relationship is going to look like. You know, and then discussing how wholesalers, you know, can really work with these real estate agents. I think there's, it's a, it's a couple of different ways. These wholesalers, they might be doing the grunt work, finding the deals, their boots on the ground. Um, they're doing some of the work that, you know, us agents are, are either don't have time for or not willing to do. And They've got their marketing hopefully down to a science that the deals just kind of fall into their lap. And so if they can build these relationships with these agents um, to get these properties sold, then, you know, everyone can win in the long run. Um, and then also a lot of a lot of wholesalers, they rarely just have one property. And so, of course, if you've got some investors and you run into a wholesaler and maybe the property they're they're talking about is not not you know one that you want to take advantage of they might have more and these wholesalers may have other relationships that you can leverage for your business for your listings your your investors you know to find those deals um with wholesalers paperwork wise of course agents have their own paperwork that they they've got to complete and then the wholesalers have their own um you know it's going to be different for every every state of course and you know, sometimes navigating that paperwork could be challenging, but communication, just keep the communication open, be friendly, be respectful. You know, wholesalers um, could be at different points in their business. They could be just beginning or they could have been doing this for years or decades. So just get on the same page, you know, we make sure everyone's winning in, in this scenario. And then of course, one of the last concerns that's, sometimes hard, harder to, to handle as an agent with these wholesalers is the commission. How do I get paid? If I bring you a buyer that can perform, that can close on this property, how do I get paid? And so, you know, you got to work that out, whether it's putting it on top of the, um, you know, negotiating it out of the wholesaler's fee because they get a fee when they sell a property. Um, or figuring it in a different sort of way, you know, coming coming up with a different plan on 
how to make sure everyone is winning in that situation. You know, the agent's taking care of the wholesale of the seller and the end user, the buyer. So honestly, how to become an agent uh, that actually works with these wholesalers and investors. You know, if, if you're not in the real estate investing game, you've got to jump into it. It's, it's a whole new set of vocabulary concepts, training, um, you know, it's a whole new world. You've got to dive into that world. You've got to learn that world. And, you know, you really have to, to navigate the different kind of ways people get out of properties as far as are they flipping it? Are they renting it? You know, what's, what's their end game? How does that all look on paper? The numbers, the numbers will be so key. Um, because it is a business. At the end of the day, it's a business. And if you don't get those numbers right, then, you know, possibly the the, the deal can't happen. Um, but, you know, once you get that training, you've got to build your network. you got to go find these, these investors, these wholesalers, where are they hanging out? Um, you know, who do they know? And this really network, which is really the you know, the premise behind building any sort of business in sales is, is that network. So you got to go find them. And of course, you got to be able to talk their talk. You need to know things like cap rate, what wholesaling is, is it legal? You know, all the ins and outs, the hard money loans. You got to know how to communicate with them, how to gain their trust, um, and how to just work with them in, a good streamlined way, you know, to, to be able to build that, that relationship, because it's going to be a long-term, you know, hopefully in any relationship that you're doing sales-wise, it's long-term. You want to put that investment in and have it pay off and have repeat business. You know, you do a good job, you're fair, you're um, easy to work with, you know, stuff like that. All the parties appreciate that. That's, that's what'll go a long way. That's how you get those referrals. That's how, You'll get first dibs at the better deals, maybe, um, maybe be that go-to agent for this wholesaler and really build a, a network like that. Because of course, not every wholesale deal can be sold off market. Sometimes these these properties have to go to market. And wouldn't it be great if this wholesaler was able to connect you with a seller who needed to list their property? Um, but what you need to learn before becoming that investor-friendly real estate agent is a couple things. Make sure you know those that vocabulary, the language, know how they're calculating their numbers. Learn the different ways that people get into properties as far as buying and then they get out of properties as far as selling or if they're holding, you know, like a rental. Um, just immerse yourself in as much training as you can. There are just... There's so many free resources. The internet, you know, YouTube is, is huge. Books, videos, trainings. You can spend literally weeks sorting through the information. Um, and you don't have to know everything about everything, of course, because you're going to, you know, it's, it's a lifetime learning situation. Um, but make an effort. If you hear a new word, write it down. Go look it up. You've got to learn those new concepts because you know, you may be dropped a little nugget of an unknown word. You look it up and it opens up an entire piece of business or way of thinking um, opportunity for in investors that you could you could offer. Perhaps, you know, it's something they don't even know. So just invest in learning. Becoming a lifetime learner, you know, is going to be key. And then, of course, where the heck are you going to find these investors and these wholesalers? Um the overall, I think, thing to remember here is these guys, guys and gals are online. They're on social media and there's just tons of platforms. They're in Facebook groups. They will have meetups or kind of workshops, seminars, different trainings. You know, that's probably where you're going to find the bulk of the wholesalers, the investors, you know, occasionally if you want to, um, maybe put a couple of, of posts out there, you know, to say you're, you're building your network and kind of see who, who responds, you know, you can do it that way too. Um, have them come to you instead of you, you going to them. And then also working with other agents, they've got, 
relationships that maybe you could leverage if you, you know, can, can do that because those agents may not be working at the level you want to work with uh, the investors and wholesalers and those other agents may, you know, very kindly share their relationships. So honestly, in short, becoming an investor friendly real estate agent can be huge. That can be huge for your business. You can leverage so many opportunities, um, build these relationships, get these off market deals, um, and just open up so many new doors that you can pivot to, you know, as you, as the real, real estate market changes and stuff like that to really build your business, you know, and the key is, is those relationships, the networking, the trust that you build, the, the service that you provide to the investors and, and to the wholesalers, um, you know, they become collaborative partners in, in the journey, in your business model. Um, you know, and it, it's, it's not even a matter of, do I know everything about everything? Because you won't and you don't have to. The key is just being open-minded, willing to learn about all the different ways that, you know, you can get in, in and out of properties in real estate, diversify your income streams. You know, you may one day be in that investor pool buying these flip properties or whatnot. So, you know, step out of your comfort zone. If you haven't done this before, build those relationships. You can really, really elevate your real estate career through these partnerships, um, you know, and just discover new opportunities. So I wish you great luck in your selling and I hope you become an investor friendly real estate agent.